Hey guys, here today with another Shiragar knife. Today we have in front of us a Custom Division Neon Mark II, also commonly known as the Neon Dam Steel. Neon Mark II is something that I really have been holding on to as a, as a term, um, something that they were referring to the knife of when it came out, but uh, most people really know this as the Neon Dam Steel, uh, mostly because of, uh, largely in part, because of the Ager Pattern Dam Steel blade here, uh, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Now this knife uh, debuted, I wanna say at uh, USN G10, I believe, in 2018. This is a 2018 series custom division knife. And let's go ahead and take a look. Um, let's do a little size comparison here. Uh, we'll start off with, actually, let's take a look and compare it to other neons. Um, this knife is in a very interesting transitional period between the original Neon Light and Ultra Light, which unfortunately I don't have, uh, and the Neon Zero, which uh, this is a Neon Retro, a variant of the Neon Zero. So that'd be really cool to compare it uh, throughout the video, uh, see what has changed uh, compared to the Neon Light, and also compare it to other knives that share a similar uh, handle shape and blade profile. Now all of these knives have very similar handle shapes and blade profiles, but they really appeared in different time periods. I would consider all of these part of the Neon Zero design family, but of course this is the only one that really became the production Neon Zero. So hopefully we'll take a look at those features in this video today as well. Um, let's continue with a short size comparison here. Whoops, wrong knife. Of course, the Neon, as many of you guys know, is the smallest member in the Shiro family. We put up against a 95 size knife and then a 111 size knife. You can see really where these, where the Neon sizes up uh, and compared to other knives, uh, coincidentally other custom divisions. Let's also go ahead and take a look at the weight of the knife. You can see here that this Neon, you know, does have a zirconium accents, which we'll talk about a little bit later. I do expect that to contribute a little bit to the weight of the knife. You see here, 3.25 ounces, so a little bit heavier than what you would expect with the standard Neon. The Neon Zero Retro here, weighing in at uh, 2.8 ounces. Again, non-contoured handles, no zirconium, will and have it be much lighter. You can see here the Neon Hard, a custom from 2017, a year, the oldest knife here, the oldest Neon, uh, is weighing in at 2.93 ounces. So I'm probably attributing that to the 3D milling, but also the scalpelization probably taking a little bit of weight off of it. Now lastly, let's go ahead and uh, take a little look at the length of the knife here. Now this knife, although predating the Neon, zero does have a similar blade profile. So what this means is you are indeed getting that 3.5 inches of cutting length, as you can see right here, with an overall handle length of, let's see, just under seven and three fourths inches with a closed handle length of, let's see here, just under four and a half, I wanna say, yeah, just under four and a half inches. So again, this knife really does serve as a transitional period between the old Neons and the Neon Zeros. Now, what does that mean? A lot of people were really impressed when this knife came out with the unique design at the time. If you weren't really aware of what was going on with Sergei's custom Neons, uh, the design of this Neon really kind of took you, uh, took you aback and, and surprised you. The, wonderful unique blade profile the new slightly longer handle was just something that was very impressive at the time Let, let's go first and talk at the talk about the blade here the blade here again is ager pattern damas steel and this blade is actually a very unique profile even when you compare it to the current day neon zeros you can see here that if we take a look in the light here it's a little bit hard to see with the pattern steel the swedge here is is quite tall and actually curves upward. Something that we had seen on other custom divisions such as the F5 Silk Slim, the first run edition of that, those wide flats, uh, also the F95 Hex, uh, something that's very unique. The knife does have the swedge that we do see on the modern day Neon Zeros alongside with the wide jimping, which was fairly common for custom divisions at the time, it still is today actually. 
Uh, and we also have that, that blade profile with that wider belly, something again that was different than what we saw on the neon ultralight and light at the time. Now, again, this tall blade flat is very unique for this model only. You take a look at the production Neon Zero, you can see we have a much shorter blade flat that uh, extends out straight across the knife. And indeed, if you take a look at a knife from just a year ago, Sergei's Customs, you can see a very similar blade profile to the current Neon Zero. Uh, it looks like this curved, taller blade flat was just an experimental thing that Sergei was playing with. Uh, but again, it's really nice to have a unique blade profile just in this knife, uh, it being a custom division. Now the etch on the dam steel is a very interesting etch, something that you see on other dam steel knives of that same period. The F3B was done in a Vinland pattern. The stainless parts are finished to what you would expect from a normal mono steel sugar grub knife. Uh, what this means is the contrast isn't super high contrast and a lot of people really prefer a, like a high polish on the steel before the etching. But honestly, I think it's nice. It, it does subdue the pattern a little bit. And honestly, dam steel isn't my favorite thing to have on a blade. Uh, so having something that's uh, not so uh, high contrast and, and obvious and something that's just slightly more subtle, I think is, uh, is nice in my opinion. But I do understand why people would prefer a high contrast etch. Now, taking a look at the handle here, you can see we have this wonderful wave radial milling that starts in the bottom left corner. It continues across the handle. Uh, and progressively gets tighter until you reach the pommel area of the knife. You can see here we also have a zirconium pivot collar. There's zirconium here. Uh, we'll also see this on the back spacer and the rear screw as well. It's done with a very nice uh, polish on the uh, zirconium itself. Uh, on the actual pivot collars, you can see they're probably taken straight off the mill, so they or this the CNC, so they have a very nice shine to them. The other parts are satin finished. Now the satin finished is uh, one of the finishes that Sirogrub does for their zirconium. The other finish is more of a, a tumble finish that gives a, a, a much more matte result. Uh, it's a little bit hard to distinguish between that and the darkened titanium that they sometimes use uh, on, their, on their more premium models. So I really do like the satin finishing that they do here. Again, we'll, we'll see more of that effect on the backspacer. Another thing that I really like uh, that is common on many neons is having the logo here in the pommel area of the knife. Now on most other knives, such as the F95, it'll be located in this area here, but since the pivot screws on all shear grub knives are of the same size, it really leaves uh, limited room to put a logo here. So to have a full size logo in the pommel area, I think is really nice and also provides some nice visual balance on the handle as well. Now, this being a custom division, of course, the handles are contoured. Uh, this combined with that radial milling does give a very nice tactile feel in the hand, especially uh, towards the pivot area where the pattern is wider. Uh, really gives you something nice to run your fingers across. Now, moving on to the lock side here, you can see that we have that same wave radial milling pattern. Uh, we also have a lock bar relief cut that is done on the outside. And to the best of my knowledge, I believe this is actually one of the first of uh, Sergei's actual designs to have that lock bar cut on the outside. A lot of people were really disappointed by this, especially because it does interrupt the radial milling pattern. But again, this is one of the things that did stick through to the current production knives here. We have a, a neon retro again, which is uh, basically a neon zero with the wave milling pattern. And even newer custom division knives, uh, such as this Hati here, which was released this year, has that external lock bar cut out. But again, this knife definitely was in that transitional period. If we take a look just one year prior, Neons did not have the lock bar cut on the outside. They had them on the inside, which is really nice from a uh, aesthetic standpoint. But Sergey did say that it, it is easier to set the lock consistently on knives that have uh, external lock bar cutouts. Uh, talking about things that are external, we also have uh, a screw for the lock bar insert that is screwed from the inside. Uh, what this means uh, on the outside, however, is since the neon handle is, is fairly thin compared to other Shurvara models, there isn't enough thread screw engagement in the titanium, uh, at least to satisfy uh, <clears throat> Sergei's concerns. So he actually has this raised portion here, which I think he has integrated beautifully into the design. Um, you'll see other knives that have this 
Uh, he'll do a little bit of work here with the lines here to kind of make it uh, really stand out and make it a focal point of, of the air, this area of the knife. Uh, I really think it's interesting how he always decides to shape these areas here. I also really like that you can see it's not completely blind uh, threaded. We have the uh, top portion here open so that you can see the beautiful hardware, uh, the shine and the precision machining of the screw is of course very noticeable. Now lastly, but I think most importantly, this clip does have the old style neon screw. Uh, the handle is definitely of uh, the, the same dimensions as what we see on the modern production Neon Zero, but this does have the old style neon screw. Again, going back one year prior, you can see we have that same uh, clip, sorry, clip, uh, not screw. But going just a few years forward, you can see the Neon Zero has its own clip that is slightly inset here uh, and has a completely different shape. Now, a lot of people uh, really had problems with retention on the Neon Ultralight and the Neon Light clip. I honestly never had that problem. Uh, again, I do carry my Neon hard uh, fairly consistently. Uh, but one thing I really do like is just how well integrated the clip is into the knife. Again, with the Neon Zero clip being offset uh, inwards, uh, it just doesn't flow with the handles as uh, much as the old style clip that you see here. And I, I really much prefer uh, the lines as well. And something that is also common with, uh, you know, custom visions and customs is uh, Sega will usually try to do something unique with the clip here. Uh, again, you can see very heavy inspiration from what he does on the customs where the clip on this neon three lines here to match up with the three uh, milling cuts in the blade, three lines on the flipper tab and three windows. Uh, we have something very similar here, just a patch of that radial milling on the clip. Uh, something that's very nice as well when you have it in your pocket, you know, having the clip exposed, you can tell that uh, this knife is different than a normal neon. Also the rear screw being done in zirconium and satin finish as well. Uh, this is the inverted screw that has given people a lot of trouble. I believe this is the second knife to utilize that screw, uh, the first one being the Cousin Division Hation. Uh, again, I, I think Sergov just loves making custom hardware to really show off uh, that they can do it. Um, the older Neons that did have a screw in this location did have a normal uh, slot and it was not inverted. So this is something that they had been doing as of recent but have just continued to be doing uh, ever since. Um, but it, it does give a nice spot to show off that satin zirconium as well. Uh, <clears throat> lastly, for the externals, we have the backspacer here. Again, this is a very nice portion where you can see that satin finish on the zirconium, especially on the high points of the backspacer. Uh, you pair that with scalloping on the handles on each side, especially where the scalloping uh, meets the backspacer. You can see the ridges on the scalloping meet up with the depressions on the gear pattern on the backspacer. And you have a very nice tactile feel here, something that's very unique to this knife. I actually don't remember seeing it on any of the custom neons. So again, another uh, very unique point for this specific custom division model. Now, of course, like the production Neon Zero, this does have a backspacer that encapsulates the tip of the knife. Uh, this allows the blade to just extend out just that bit, just that extra bit further and to give some, a couple of extra millimeters on the Neon Zero profile blade. Now, interestingly enough, again, this feature has uh, made its way to the production Neon Zero, but if we take a look at all three of these Neons here, you can see that the backspacer designs are all different. The Neon Retro here, or Zero, uh, has a very short encapsulation. Uh, the Neon Damasteel has a more, well, long, it extends back further into the knife, but is thinner. And uh, the Neon Hard here uh, is much thicker on the walls. Again, Sergey is really not afraid, uh, since they do make all of their hardware in-house, uh, it's really trivial for them to uh, make something completely unique for a specific model. Of course, this does mean that the knife uh, has no parts interchangeability. Um, but you know, if you're doing a limited run, uh, then you know it's it's not as important since you, you just make the parts and they're already done. 
Speaking of that, actually, well, first let's talk about the internal milling. Now, this is internal milling as you would expect on the Shiro Gorov. Uh, one thing that impressed me at the time was the internal milling on the lock bar as well. Uh, one part that most uh, knife makers usually tend to leave untouched, uh, something that Shiro Gorov has done and milled out. Now, like all custom divisions, this knife is on roller bearings. As you can see, the logo right here, this is single row roller bearings. And lastly, what I wanted to talk about here is this is part of the knives in the 2018 custom division lineup where the numbering scheme had changed. So you can see here, the numbering system is custom division. And then the first two numbers, 18, represent that this knife was part of the 2018 custom division lineup. Number four represents that this is the fourth knife in the 2018 series. And then after the bear here, you can see 23, which is the actual batch, uh, the actual number in the batch. Now the batch actually also got extended from 30, which was the traditional uh, run number for custom vision knives up until 50, uh, which is also nice for collectors as well, since it allows more of the knives to be made with a greater chance uh, for you to acquire them at lottos uh, or otherwise. Uh, that's pretty much it for this model. Um, I had this model before, really enjoyed it. Actually, forgot to mention it again, really bad habit. Uh, this knife was sent in by a friend. I really do appreciate that since uh, this is a knife that I had and, and let go uh, quite a while ago and uh, one of the few knives in the custom vision lineup that I, I do regret doing so. So again, I really appreciate that. Uh, really helps keep the channel fresh with new content. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. A lot of uh, stuff to talk about in this one, as always. Uh, but again, really enjoy you guys watching my videos and hope you guys have a nice day.